What's up, everybody? All right, I'm back. My name's Russ with RWGResearch.com. You should know this by now, unless you're a new subscriber. Welcome. Okay, if you're new, you won't remember this video, but if you've been here a while, you remember. I am actually making my own spindle so I can see and see cut stuff on my 3D printer. So where we left off was we played around with this, we played around with the controller, we played around with the motor, we got a little learning, learning about the motor and stuff. I want to drop this and bend the shaft. But uh, yeah, so now I want to attach this to this. Alright, I 3D printed this uh, tool holder, but I'll take it out of here. So, I've got the front half and I want to attach the back half with the shaft in between. So, this is a 3mm shaft. This is uh, something else, but the outside diameter, let me show you what's in here. The outside diameter of this end piece right here is actually um, a quarter inch outside diameter. And the inside is some other standard. And then there's a slot cut in there, as you can see, right there. Now that slot is designed for a key to fit in there. So the, the original piece is a shaft that fits in the hole and has a, a key in there and so that the key holds onto the slot and that's how the thing actually catches. There's no set screws or anything like that. Then you just pop the, uh, the end out, in and out, and you're good to go. So what I did is I dug through all of my crap, and I got a lot of it, and I could not find any DC motors except for one that had a three millimeter shaft. It happened to have a gear on it. It had a plastic one, and it had a brass one. And that was it. That was the only thing I could find. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So then I grabbed my servo motor box, and that's where I hit the jackpot. So the servo motors, they were the ones that actually had everything I needed. So here are the servo motors that I founded. You've got the, the generic CD-ROM drive uh, stepper motors, which I was actually thinking about using one of these when I was building this instead of this. And uh, these have three millimeter shafts on them. So here's one of the ends. It's a plastic one, so it fits better. And it fits really, uh, fits really tight on there, really nice. So the next question was, was what else do I have? And actually these nice uh, generic small servo motors, these are actually really good little units. And these uh, usually come out of small um, uh, paper uh, printers. So they usually uh, have a belt driven system for the head and this is usually what they run off of, something similar to this. So I have a bunch of these, different types. So anyway, I'm going to be taking all this crap and I'm going to be attempting to make a uh, a shaft coupling and then uh, and then I'll have to make another separate piece that actually holds this thing on. We'll see how far we get in this video but that's the plan. This is where I found all my crap and now we're gonna see what we got next. Okay let's talk about my plan of action. So my plan of action is to actually make a piece that fits on the outside of here and somehow it's gonna be attaching to this motor probably going to have to be a flat plate with some holes in it because these are threaded. I could drill these out and thread the plate, which might be easier because then I can just put the bolts to the top. However, I thought if I could make a plate with an inside cup in it where I could actually put the bolts on the outside and hold it this way, I could do that. Now, since this is machined, it's got a nice, solid, simple diameter on it and I can make a uh, aluminum piece that fits on here and then maybe a set screw to hold it in place. I can make all those precision parts. The hardest part's gonna be making the shaft. So for the shaft, none of this stuff, I mean, none of this stuff is, and we've got this slot to worry about, which is definitely a concern. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about that slot being, knocking the whole thing off balance. So I may actually have to fill that in with, a, with something. So I looked through all my stuff, I found one shaft that happens to fit perfectly on the inside of here. I mean, there's like no slop at all. It fits perfectly on the inside. So I can use that. And then the next thing I found was a an aluminum sleeve that appears to be machined really nicely on the inside. And it must be quarter inch because it fits perfectly on there. However, this sleeve is off balance. It is not machined on the outside. 
so I can't really use it, but at least uh, at least I know uh, I can do a size fit for this guy and see what we really need. Then the next thing I'm thinking about doing is on this side, I'm going to put one of these brass pieces like this, and then and then machine the outside of this so I can put another coupling on the outside. So I can run a set screw in and then I can put a sleeve over top of that and run a set screw through this into the brass. Now I gotta be careful to keep it small enough diameter to fit on here because this actually doesn't fit as you can see. Now I did find some set screws, little bitty tiny little set screws. These things are really small. And uh, I looked through a bunch of crap. I happened to find these and I think I have the right caps and we can actually make this work. The other idea was if I took this motor apart I could actually press this extra long um, shaft, it's already got a shaft that goes all the way through, I could press this extra long gear on here because it's a pretty tight fit and then I could have a perfect coupling between this shaft and this shaft, that should be perfect for that. And then I can put um, a little bushing on the inside of here you know, so I sort of have a, a shaft to the center and a sleeve, um, but I don't know, things could get complicated, but I just want to show you where I'm starting, and I have no idea what we're going to actually end up with. Okay, so I found this round piece of stock. It's aluminum, and I think what we're going to do is just try to make a quarter inch inside diameter um, coupling. So we're just going to make a quarter inch on the inside. Uh, i got a couple of reamers here. We're going to actually ream it out and try to get it as perfect as we can. And then on the other side, uh, well that's it. We're going to go straight through all the way. We're going to make just a quarter inch adapter similar to what this tube was. Very similar to the same size and everything. But we're going to make it longer. That's the goal. Uh, well, you know, we've managed to make quite the mess. However, we also managed to make this little coupler. So this is the coupler. I got two set screws on this side. This is the side that goes on the motor. This is the side that goes on the tool holder, the uh, handpiece. So what my goal was, was if I put those two set screws right in the crack of this tool, possibly the weight of the set screws and um, and the off balance of the aluminum would be a little bit more offset and make make that a little bit more balanced plus it will actually force that open a little bit and push it out against the edge of this in case it doesn't fit perfectly so there's one piece now we gotta figure out the motor half yeah okay I decided to go ahead and put the shaft on here and I did take the Dremel and cut down one of those set screws and uh, this thing fits so tight inside of here that there's almost no room at all. So I could have made this smaller, but I kind of wanted it thick as possible, and it's as thick as possible. It does turn in there. It has enough room to move. However, I'm going to turn the inside of this open just a little bit more, just to give myself a little bit more leeway. Now this hole here was designed to hold the... Uh, flex cable in with a clip and there's a little ball in there so it clips in there. However, I went ahead and designed this right so that I could get to the set screws through that hole. So I'll always make sure those are open and that's how I'll disconnect the shaft motor set screws. Okie dokie. So I just used a drill bit. That was the easiest method. Drilled that guy out and now it uh, has a lot more play. Perfect. Set screws in the hole. I think we're rocking. Now we got to figure out how we're going to connect all the other pieces. I think I'm going to use a brass bushing on the motor, machine that to fit this quarter inch shaft that I made, and then it already fits the three millimeter. I don't have a three millimeter reamer. I got no, absolutely no way to make a really precise three millimeter hole, but I did have that quarter inch reamer so I was lucky enough that the outside diameter of this was quarter inch. Alright let's get to it. Alright I've decided to try to use this and I'm gonna have to stick it on a shaft 
And I think what I want to do is go ahead and drill a set screw into this, just one. And then I'll use the other uh, points for the other set screws. I'll have to make some flat edges. But I need to be able to turn this down, so I need to have it on a shaft. So this allows me to have it on a shaft, but I need to hold it down so I can turn it down to the right diameter. This could be tricky. Um, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Alrighty then. So here's what I got. I got a little brass insert. It will indeed fit a tiny micro set screw that I cut down. Let's see if we can get focused on it. There you go. I cut it down pretty short on both sides. But it has to fit in there enough to where it don't stick out because it has to fit inside the other bushing. It does go, trust me. Apparently I don't know what I'm doing. There it goes. Alright, so this fits inside of this. Not by much, but it does. Alright, that fits perfectly inside there. And then the goal is to get it on here. Just like that. So I'm actually going to cut a, or, you know, take my Dremel tool and actually make a tiny little flat spot, enough for that set screw to sit. Just a little. It doesn't need much at all. But I am going to put a flat spot on this shaft so that one set screw catches it. So these set screws are going to be offset, and then they'll just be set into that brass. I don't think I'm going to flatten the brass because the set screws are going to go into it with no problem. Ha 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 ha! Check it out! This is my portable hand Dremel. This is probably better than any Dremel that you can buy at this point in time. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe some expensive ones. So you can see you can get to the set screw right there. I dropped two of these. I had exactly the amount I needed, so uh, yeah, that's not great. However, this is just sitting on here at the moment. Um, I will have to again make a little plate right here so this all sits uh, correctly. But as far as I'm concerned, that is it. This is going to be happening in the next video, and then we'll go through some testing phases. Or maybe I'll just do it right now. What's up? Okay. It's a few days later, so I've completed the project, but you won't see that till later. I went back, and I added a little shim stock to fill in that gap. And then I also balanced, to my best ability, this uh, other brass bushing. So. Now these should be a little bit more balanced. Um, I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to put it all back together. I'm going to see if it is a little more balanced. It was slightly off. Probably not enough to worry about, but enough to think that I could probably do better. So just to let you know, yes, I filled this in. It's wedged in there. And cutting circuit boards. All right, I say that's success. In the next video, we will make this adapter, do some more modifications and testing and check everything out, and then I'm actually gonna use it as a pin Dremel, just like this, just to see if it works. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.